and you mentioned gang behavior. Um, what does it do to, what's the increase in gang behavior, especially in New Jersey suburbs, due to now? It's a complicated uh, question, and, and hopefully I can give you a, a fairly uh, succinct answer. Gangs are cyclical in American history. We've always had gangs. We've had gangs going back uh, all throughout human history. But right now, the upsurge, I think, is due to um, unemployment, uh, youth who don't have direction, and quite frankly, the inability to find a caring adult. The studies show that young people that are attached to a caring adult uh, find their way in this world. And a lot of young people in our urban areas and increasingly our suburban areas are not finding the caring adult, the boys and girls club, all the institutions that um, help young people find their way. We've defunded them. We can't r find resources, philanthropic resources to support them. And I think there's a d direct correlation there with increased gang activity. And once the gangs get a hold of these young people, it's very difficult to get them out of it, quite frankly. Now, um, Rutgers was being planned as one of the major sites for the study of uh, biotechnology in terms of, in terms of stem cell research. And it was part of the bond issues that were defeated in New Jersey in November. Does that set back your research? Uh, does that a problem for the directions that you all had planned to go in? Well, there's really two prongs of this. Uh, there was one bill that was passed for appropriations for money to build a new stem cell institute, and that was a collaboration between uh, UMDNJ, Robert Wood Johnson, and also Rutgers. That has passed, and there was a groundbreaking. And then the other bond issue was to appropriate $450 million over the course of 10 years to pay for research in competitive grants and also for internal programs, very much like an NIH-style intramural program, an extramural program. Because that bond issue didn't pass, uh, there's less money for those uh, programs, but there still is um, some pool of money for research uh, in the form of research grants. Do you think that voters turned it down because they're concerned about more bonded indebtedness, or did they turn it down because they're concerned that they really didn't understand the ethical implications of what's behind stem cell research? Um, I think it's a combination of both issues. I mean, there's always a certain percentage of people that will uh, not open their wallet ever, and who wants to pay more taxes, and there's a general fear in New Jersey. Now, I'm not a voter because I'm only a landed immigrant, not a citizen. And so I don't know much about the voting process, but from what I can gather from friends and colleagues, um, most of them who I know voted for it because they're scientists. And uh, the few people who I know who don't were really tired of paying more and more money and didn't want to have um, How about here more in New debt. Jersey, we have a legislature now with a record number of women. Do you think that'll have any effect on you know the way the legislature conducts business, you know what they produce? You know? I think what it will do. Um, uh, when we bring more women in, and we do have that within our state uh, Senate mm -hmm. and Assembly, is it helps to, it's not, I don't think it will change the way mm -hmm. business is done as much as it will make it more inclusive. Um, so we will be able to bring women to the table to begin to impact policy and programs and understand what's going on legislatively. Um, so I think the fact that New Jersey has done this at the state uh, level is really important. Um, and it also does a better job of ensuring that the people who are in those positions represent the electorate. Um, New women make up about 50% of our population. Um, so it's important that, you know, there is not a disconnect between the people, the constituents who are voting people in and, and who is representing them. You've spoken to Rich about the question of New Jersey's plan and the bill introduced by Senator Vitale. Yep. Uh, it struck me it's, it had a lot of similarities to the bill in, in uh, Massachusetts um, that Governor Romney signed when he was up there. Um, are there differences that are significant? Sure. Uh, I can t take you through them pretty quickly. Uh, the similarities are that it has an individual mandate, that it sweeps in as many that are in entitlements as it can to get federal match. It also requires the Section 125, which allows people to buy their health benefits with pre-tax dollars if their uh, employer doesn't cover them. But that's where the similarities One end. One comment, though, as a result of your three, if you're 
people who watch this, mm -hmm. uh, we looked at Sherry Galid's uh, stuff on your uh, material on your website, and we actually went into New York at Columbia to meet with her. Uh, she was very helpful in helping us with the economics of the Vitale plan. Good, good. Well, uh, uh, she was outstanding. The whole institute's always glad to play a benevolent role in, well, you had in a public real, policy. You had a real role in this particular. Very one. good. It's good to hear.